Welcome to My Wild Magic with me, your host, Adrian Cobb. Join me on a journey back home to your truest self in this inspiring, enlightening, and entertaining show. After a near-death experience in a car crash at 15 years old, I made a choice to stay and brought back with me three simple truths that I found from the other side. Love is all there is, our time is over here quicker than we think, and we all have a purpose, a soul blueprint to fulfill. On this show, you will find a higher purpose, a creative expression, and unique soul attributes that you can bring forth into this world. Stay tuned with me for the next hour and find your higher purpose on My Wild Magic, starting now. Welcome, everyone. Thanks for joining the show today. You are on My Wild Magic with Adrian. I'm Adrian Cobb. And uh, today on the show, we have Judith Manricas. She is a spiritual business mentor and visionary intuitive to women in the areas of being their fullest self, creating beyond the norm, and growing a business in alignment with their soul. Judith has an uncommon gift for seeing clarity and possibilities where others see confusion and chaos. She really does do that because she's worked with me for years. She takes that clarity and helps women grow their business by implementing the unique path that their soul is guiding them towards. So welcome, Judith. Thanks, Adrian. I'm excited to be here. Yeah. So um, what kind of got you started? Because I mean, you have a, uh, from what I understand, you have kind of more of a marketing background, which is great. But Mm -hmm. uh, what kind of got you started more on a spiritual journey and wanting to help people do business, but in a more spiritually minded way? You know, I wish I'm going to copy you and take off my glasses. Um, I wish there was like some big, big story, but it's been a really gentle journey. I found that when I was doing my mark, when we had a marketing business and doing marketing, I just kept feeling like there's more to do. And I'm like, it was too simple for me to do marketing for people uh-huh. and started looking and just, it coincided with me having children. It coincided with me looking for other aunts, beautiful mentors along the way. You were one of them. And I found that over time, as my intuition grow, grew and the way that I was started to see the world, I kind of found my place. Like I've figured out that where my gifts take me is seeing the vision of people and holding their highest potential. And that often can seem chaotic. And what I'm seeing now is just so much fun because of all of the energies that are coming in. So I guess it wasn't like a big symbol crash trauma in my life or like a big devastation. It's been a gentle journey. And that's the way to go. I'm all about that. Well, (laughs) yes. The the interesting thing about gentle journeys, though, is that as you're on the journey, you're confused because you don't, you're looking for a place. And I kind of feel like I found my place. I'm solid where I am. Yeah. I feel a lot of people who are, you know, looking for their path in life right now. And um, it's interesting because I think that we all are born with a soul blueprint. We all have like a sense of who we are inside of us. We have these natural gifts and talents and desires. Um, you know, but what do you think causes us to get so off track, uh, that we, we act like we don't know who we are or what we're here for? Like, what have you found in working with people that is sort of the offshoot that causes us? It's, it's such a primary part of the essence of who we are, but yet somehow it's what most people I know are still trying to figure out for themselves. What causes that Um, gap? What I think, (laughs) you know, I think Wow. It's a good question. I would say there's probably a couple of things, but the things that I see most in people in terms of the gaps is one, when all the things that you grow up with in your youth teach you who the world sees you to be and not really who you really are inside. And there's always that disconnect between who you really are inside and who the world keeps telling you, parents, society, schools, and we get lost I think the internal, we get lost from our internal selves, our soul selves get lost inside of our human physical world, going to school self, living life self. Um, And then I I think we get off course because we forget how to really see and believe. I think, you know, as I'm talking to you, I'm like, oh yeah, for me, it's been, I was probably really intuitive as a kid and didn't know it and didn't have connections to intuitive stuff and didn't have exposure to know how and, Mm -hmm. And it's not like I see visions or hear voices. It's very subtle, but I think we're all, 
we all just don't have enough of the tools that I think are now available to us to know how to stay in alignment with our souls. And we just, and maybe kind of early on too. And, and I imagine sometimes, you know, just from the work I've done with people that a lot of times I feel like the family we're born into and the location in the world we're born into is mm -hmm. somewhat sometimes kind of karmic, like we're meant to come in. And I find a lot of times we're born into situations that can be almost the opposite of who we are, which oh, gives yeah. us that action reaction to basically at some point, remember who we are and then go mm -hmm. forward from that point, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. And I find that uh, having known you for years and worked with you and you've been instrumental in my business personally, uh, that you do a very good job holding a higher vision. I would say that, you know, in the indigo spectrum of things, you might mm -hmm. hold a bit more of that diamond, you know, indigo child energy, where you really do see the precision, you see the higher vision, there's a lot of beauty to your energy field, it's very gifted and clear in that way. But when you hold a vision for somebody's soul, that's an amazing gift. Like it's one thing to say, I'm going to hold a vision for feng shui in your house or a vision for, you know, these things. But when you hold a vision for somebody's soul expression, that's huge. I mean, uh, yeah, it's a real honor actually to be able to do that. How does it feel when you do that? Like, how do you uh, feel when you're holding that energy with somebody? it feels so natural, you know, like our own natural gifts are so natural. And since there's nothing to compare to, it was hard to find my path. I was very mental. I, I can still be incredibly mental and work through things that way. And so I could say, I'm going to help you with your highest potential, but explaining that to somebody else from a soul perspective was always difficult. Um, what I love to do and what it feels like now is, um, oh, it feels really expansive. It's always Im immensely clear with a little bit of a conversation with somebody. It's like, oh, I can see it but it's not visually seen. Um, there's a so knowing. Let me, let me clarify. So you think you're seeing it more from your higher self's viewpoint? Oh, good questions. Um, like it's, it's not necessarily, yes. it sounds like your physical, like some people are visionaries where they just see it all play out before them. But it sounds like yep. from what you're describing, you see it more from a higher self point of view, which I sort of like that idea because I think the higher self is more, um, it's not, doesn't have as many agendas as our personality. It's more uh, detached. It has a clearer vision of it. So it might even be a truer form seeing somebody's vision from the higher self. Yeah, if it's had a place, level. it's definitely up here. It's, it's higher up. I don't see it in the, it doesn't sit in the same realm as the place where I can see of the things that you put on the table of all the things you want to be doing. When you, when people start talking about, well, I want to do this or this or this, or I have a dream about doing this or my desire or outcome or whatever it is, those sit in a different realm. And there's something about what happens for me is I can see or perceive these things and I can see the ways that they're connected to where you're going and know which one's more in alignment and know which one's up. And, mm -hmm. and then there's something also that's kind of in another level down where I'm actually aware of the um, physical person's own issues. Or well, That's my next question. Yeah. yeah, there's something in the human manifestation that's between this, your desires and that. And it's kind of like a byplay. How do we work all the channels to see which one's the most correct to work with? Yeah, absolutely. Because that is a big part of it, right? Because you can hold that, like you can see somebody from the outside looking in from your higher self's viewpoint of, ah, oh, this is a vision that would be so ideal for your life and your soul gifts and all that. And then their idea of themselves kind of has to match. And then mm -hmm. the issues they're going to meet around allowing that to happen mm -hmm. is a whole nother issue. Yeah. Yes. So how do you help people yes. when they, I mean, all of us are going to hit blocks along our journey. I mean, all of us are human. All of us have, you know, insecurities that come up at times or places where we don't believe or have faith or whatever. So, you know, how do you work with people when those do come up? Because they inevitably will. Uh, do you know what's really fascinating about that for me? I never, I never see them in the current moment, not on the journey to the place they're going. And I think that's where part of the gift is, you know, we say, hold the energy. There's some different languages, but for me, when somebody's having a hard time, I recognize they're having a hard time. And at the same time, if they're willing to hear it, I can give them the perspective shift where that thing is actually taking them where they want to go and they can make a small shift. They can make a big shift. They can sit in that a while. And I'm happy to be with them 
for as long as it takes them to move through that thing, because I can always see how that place of, of challenge, hardship, misalignment, whatever we want to call it, is actually such an easy shift to seeing where they're actually going. Right. There's always a connection. Yeah, I, don't, yeah. I don't lose that connection. And I always, I've, and everyone I've ever seen, met, worked with, always makes that shift. Some people faster than others, but they'll always make it and move to the next. It, it's on their journey. It's just a path. It's like, oh, I stepped in a mud puddle. Was it a good thing or a bad thing? Well, neither, but you're still on the journey. You're right. getting closer. So if somebody has a business and they come to you and they have an idea, what's some of the typical people that you, you work with? Like what's some ideas of uh, some of the clients you currently work with right now? What kind of businesses do they have? I have people across the spectrum. So I have bricks and mortar. Um, I currently work with somebody who has a dance studio. I work with somebody who has a full on digital business. Um, I have uh, mostly highly intuitive women. Some of them are front facing intuitive. That's part of their work. Um, some of them are intuitive, like dance studio doesn't come into play, but she runs her business from that place and is very interested in expanding herself that way. So it's, it's all people I've worked with have, are, have already been on their journey a while. They know who they are and they're really trying to integrate their soul, their highest potential into their everyday life in this new world. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. And then, so they come to you and what kind of support are they looking for? Like, sometimes I think that when people are wanting to start a business or they have a vision for some creative expression in their life, they may not um, most, I find that most women entrepreneurs are kind of fiercely independent by nature. And so a lot of times they may not even know what kind of help or what it would be like to have somebody like you support them. So, um, you know, if there were people out there wanting to do that, like, like it's even a jump for somebody to say, oh my God, I could have a support system <laughs> like Judith, you know? <laughs> so what is that like for somebody? Uh, oh, like so what you're kind of offering? So um, there's been a while where I was working with people who were really trying to get their feet under themselves when they were working on their business. And that part might come back up because I really enjoy people when they're, re they're committed and they're really trying to get things going. Um, now I keep feeling, um, I say this to people who know me really well, when I, when I put together my one-on-one -on -one mentorship work, which is what I exclusively do these days, um, I always listen for the energy tone of what are the engagements going to look like right now. And right now the engagements are really coming up around this energy of emergence that we're playing with. Mm, and so go. it is, it's very, um, the engagements are non-linear it's very supportive. It's around business and it's around helping create a structure without creating old structures. It's how do we move? And, and, and for me, it's kind of easy. So sometimes it's really hard to say, I just work with what shows up and we then create things, but there's this new energy uh, that's creating a sense for people of desire to create without the full clarity of what is because the energies are so fresh and new and so it's, um, it could be innovative. We can think that it's innovative, but I think we're having completely new ways of, let's say we have totally new intuitive um, healing gifts coming out for people. And then how That's do they true. share those? Yeah. Right? How do they share them? So, how do they make things clear? Yeah. That's awesome. So question? we're going to, we're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back okay. and go more into the energy of emergence. So hang in there with us. Hey, welcome back, everyone. Okay, so we're here with uh, Judith Manricas, who works with women uh, in their entrepreneurial businesses, their visionary process, their heart's desires, helping to ground it into the world. And we were just talking about how there is a new energy of emergence um, that she's noticing in the business realm. Uh, that sounds like it's really affecting all of us. And if, if you're, it sounds like you're kind of really working on the cutting edge of this energy as it's just coming in. So explain a little bit more about what you mean about this emergence energy and how it's relevant to, to all of us so, right now. Yeah. You know, I almost want to ask, finish, ask, answer it by asking you the question. So like you're a highly intuitive person and have you noticed shifts in your intuition or the way you're perceiving from the way you used to perceive, let's say a year or two years ago? maybe even three. I don't know. It's pretty fresh. 
Yeah, no, I do think that the new earth frequencies that are coming in have been raising vibration. I feel a little bit more detached from the world as a whole. Um, mm -hmm. Not quite as engaged around this concept of having to fix or save the world, but more so a personal sense of what brings me joy and happiness and how can I do my work based on that frequency? So I feel um, yeah, more connected to my own inner presence versus something I got to go shift or change in the outer world. Um, I've also noticed that my intuition just recently in the last couple of months, I'd say has also become much like, like a greater sense of clarity. And I know that even though I might be an intuitive in the work that I do, this type of clarity that's coming in is coming in more on a kind of from these higher galactic frequencies and these higher ascension frequencies and things like that. So I do feel like there is more light coming onto the planet and anybody who is even like probably an inkling sort of in that ballpark of intuition and being comfortable with it, that their life path of what they thought they were doing and what they're actually here to do might be coming into greater alignment, what they're really here to do now. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So you just described like higher vibrations that are coming in. And I've, you know, I've been following that too, but let's say you don't have context for understanding what higher vibrations are. So we'll just use a little more general language that can apply to everybody for me, but it's this idea that we all can agree that there's higher vibration energies hitting the earth, whether they're coming from photonic rays or whatever, whatever, wherever language you get, but those higher vibrations are going to cause all of us, the whole planet to raise vibration. And those of us in the intuitive realm are already experiencing sort of the larger influx of people who are awakening, who need more services, the, the speed with which all of the intuitive metaphysical esoteric realms have come into mainstream. It's kind of astonishing mm -hmm. and there's a demand for it, right? So I think that that's an accepted norm. Now, when we talk about emergence energies, I think we've raised enough of the energy on the planet for a lot of us to where when those really high vibration energies come in, we actually have people receiving them in a in a new way and able to use them in a new way where before we were just kind of denser, still trying to get ourselves out of the muck, kind of get awareness of ourselves. And so as these higher vibration energies come in and you've already cleared yourself enough, you can take them in and then do more with them. And it's not about awakening anymore, but it's about bringing in entirely unseen, unknown, new solutions, new directions, new possibilities that that we thought were never going to happen there that's available to us now. Yeah. You've got some, uh, your higher self is sort of communicating with me a little bit, uh, around this as well as some of your angels, but, you know, uh -huh. um, trying to describe the difference between awakening and emergence. And so they're kind of showing the awakening is like a butter, uh, like a, like a little warm in a cocoon and it's struggling and struggling and trying to get out, you know, an awakening kind of takes some effort on our part, you know, Oh God, I got to look at that childhood issue, or I got to like deal with this relationship issue, or I got to change my diet, or I got to, you know, let go of my job or whatever. Right. So the uh -huh. awakening feels like there is a bit of a, um, uh, <laughs> sometimes kind of, um, changes that have to occur, which sometimes can feel a bit like a struggle or kind of intimidating. The emergence energy feels like it's the butterfly that's sitting on top of the cocoon now really ready to kind of fly and put its wings out and it's still new. The wings are still new, but it's not the struggle anymore. It's more like the taking flight with the butterfly's grace that it was always meant to have. That's coming exactly. directly from your higher self and your angels, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> there you well, have now it. everyone can know it. It feels that way. It's really light and high vibration. And we have to stay in that high vibration to kind of keep, to stay with it and work with it. It's mm -hmm. gorgeous. Yeah, it is. It's quite cool energy. So emergent energy. Um, yeah, it does seem like, uh, I think for anybody who maybe I would wonder, you know, has already kind of come to the planet with a kind of a, um, like a higher vision in mind, um, you know, this will be affecting them specifically. Like some people, it depends on where you're at, maybe in your karmic journey of life. Some people, it's more about the survival. It's about certain soul lessons they're learning. And then some souls have just come, they've used their lifetimes wisely. They've gained their soul's wisdom. 
they really have known how to tap into these higher resources. And so at this lifetime, it feels like mm -hmm. they're really ready to utilize all this energy coming on. And I think that's where you come in because yes. you're like a emergent sort of guide in a sense, it sounds like, yes. you know, yes. because uh, you're, it seems like you're, you're very gifted at being able to look at the energy that um, the intuitive uh, universal energy that's coming in, which you're aware of, which a lot of people are not, they're just not. And mm -hmm. then you're also aware of this person's soul and their higher vision and um, the higher vision that comes in from their higher self. And when you merge the two, it's like this incredibly just winning formula, like this, 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 you just unstoppable force when you breathe in, because like, let's say somebody has a vision, but they don't realize the universal energy coming in, they might be missing out. They'll sense it and feel it, but they won't know what to do with it. And then yeah. people who feel the energy, but don't apply it towards how they can actually use it for the benefit of humanity, they're missing out too. So you're, you and the, um, mentorship work you do, it feels like you have one of those rare gifts that marries both of those things together, brings them both together in this divine union that makes it user-friendly. You're like the user-friendly manual for, uh, <laughs> for anybody who is in the emergence phase right now. Yes. And, you know, I, yes, all of that is correct. You've described what it feels like. And so let me, let me bring it home to the people who are following and listening it's when you, when you think about it in real form. So let's say you're not super, super intuitive. Cause I'm, I'm, I do perceive, but I would say you're way more can see way more than I do. Right. But, um, the way it feels in our bodies when we're going through this emergence energy is almost like a nervous system trauma response hmm. without a reason for it. So you're, what's happening is you have these brand new energies coming in and there's this whole new realm opening up for you. And since we have no context for, you know, it's like a butterfly getting ready to take off, that butterfly has no context for what it's like to fly. It's never flown before. It's never been in air. It's never. And so there's this feeling with these energies and it, we have such a mental disconnect and then almost a body disconnect with that energy because we only know the world like this. And yet the energies coming in are allowing us to move in this world like this in a completely different way. And so, it, and, and this is all sort of men, like it's, it's abstract kind of mental stuff. Mm -hmm. And yet when it shows up in people's businesses or it shows up in their work, it's tangible. It's like, I feel like I'm ready to quit this, but don't know what's next. I, or I'm feeling stressed and I don't know why. Um, I have dreams and it feels like it should be easier to get to. And I'm not sure how to make that jump. You know, it's, there's some of these things where we want a plan or a path like we've been accustomed to and the models and the systems and the way of doing things don't feel right, but we don't know what else. Like those are some more concrete ways. Um, I'm also really excited because if anybody follows like the web three and the DAOs and the NFTs and everything going on in that really, really cutting edge place right now, that's a full example of what's happening that, that is emergence energies in practice in a system playing out right now in a really big way. It was really excited for me to realize, oh, that's a big example of how emergence energies are playing out in practice. Yeah. So, um, I have no idea what those three things are. So, so give me an idea of the three little integrams that you know. What, what is that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Catch me up there. <laughs> so there's this what's happening in the internet world right now. And I, I don't understand a lot. So please know, I only understand it conceptually. We had first edition web, which was like back when websites were just like brochures where you could just go read them. And then the web moved to where we kind of have now, I see. And the where there's more interaction and we have social media and people are coming and going and, but it's still based on a thing. And then now the way that's getting developed and this is conceptual, everyone will own a piece of it and it's not going to be owned by people, groups like Facebook or like Google, like all of these multiple things are going to be owned collectively. And so it's really fascinating to me that it's not a it's not, it's not connected this way into one. It's like, it's a spider web of a connection where everyone will own something. Mm. And so this idea of unity consciousness is playing out here in systems now. 
And as the web goes, so will other structures. And they're showing us how to create, create non-centralized, fully community type structures that no one had envisioned before this. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Got it. Yeah. So I'd imagine that, you know, there's just a lot of new ideas sparking from the field of all possibilities and the yes. field of potentiality and the quantum mm -hmm. field, you know, that there's um, a lot of the souls, let's say indigo souls or souls that came in with a certain amount of enlightenment or consciousness that there's like in the emergence energy, I'd imagine there's like a wake up button that just came on. You know what I mean? Yeah. So some of their mm -hmm visions or ideas or how to improve or help the earth sound like they are really going to start flooding in um, mm -hmm. again with all this light coming in it will bring not only light that helps us in our dna and our soul evolution and our physical body evolution but it feels like it also helps us bringing in ideas that will better the planet new infrastructures because you've mentioned that a couple of times that the old system doesn't seem to be working as well and there's a new system coming about that's going to start to awaken yeah. so um but before we get into that we're going to take a quick break and we'll be back in just a moment we're going to go a little bit deeper into um how your work really kind of supports people um in fulfilling their vision but like you said in that network of energy how does that actually help the earth itself by in this emergence and how you help people how do they contribute their vision to a bigger whole so we'll be back in just a moment Welcome back. Okay, we are on with Judith Manricus, and she is a visionary uh, guide for others, mentors for others. She has a mentorship program. Judith, so if people wanted to get in touch with you to learn more about what you do, maybe look at your services, because they too have a vision they would like to emerge in the world, how can they get in touch with you? Uh, my website, judithmanriquez.com, and I'm that? also on Instagram. Uh, M -A so J U D I T H M A N R I. Q U E Z dot com. Yeah. I'm also on Instagram. That's probably like the most common place for me to be. And I'm also on Substack. So you can find me on Substack if y'all are Substack, you know, fans. Yeah, there's so many different platforms out now. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, that are out there. Okay, so so we were just talking about how that emergence energy is like a um you know, it feels like it's sort of a, a collective sort of energy, right? Like emergence is not just for one person. It's really, it's kind of a, an emergence for the earth. It's an emergence for humanity. It's an emergence kind of in its, its own sort of larger form. And then how it affects people individually can cause them to wake up to a higher life path, a higher purpose, a higher sense of love, self-respect, better decision-making process. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, that kind of thing, right? And so because it is a bigger sort of like fluidic energy, right, for the earth itself, um, how do you feel like that is affecting, like the emergence energies are affecting the whole and how an individual is affecting the whole when they come into their emergence? That's a good question. So I'm just kind of listening for that. So it's how does the individual affect the whole? I do feel it shifting the planet but or the planet is shifting us right so the planet is already receiving and taking this in so earth herself it's really taking this in and sharing it back with us i think individually i don't know the way i predominantly see it is each of the individuals i just think we're going to see over probably the next decade a, a lot more people coming up with i'm going to call it miracles almost miracle solutions to situations that we didn't think would ever find answers oh my and god yes i would be so so grateful if we found some miracle solutions to uh so many of the world's problems actually right now i could uh i yeah, that would uh, i think we're gonna see that i think we're gonna see that too. and I, I you know too. when you ask that question i can also feel you know, we, we say that there's people awakening. So the, there's people who are gaining greater awareness of the concept of compassion and love and seeing themselves as pieces of compassion and love, right? That's a simple higher consciousness. But we have people who are already moving in this realm, whether they came on the planet already mo moving at a higher vibration, or there are those of us who've been working our way to higher vibrations, right? But there's this, there's this feeling piece of that where we're we're merging we're like bringing all of us up 
at the same time. Like the, the, the people who are waking up are going to have a, you know, we talk about the challenges, like whether we have a recession or we have economic issues or we have war issues or we have earth stress. And we're going to see some of that, but the more of us that can, can bring ourselves up into higher frequencies, it doesn't mean to detach from the stuff going on, but to stay with the possibilities of what can happen, we're going to create the possibilities of what can happen. And that's going to happen fast. It feels like it's going to happen fast. Yeah, I do agree. I think over the next two to three years, we'll see some really yes. positive changes occur that have just been... Um, yeah, kind of behind a veil almost that are just all of a yes. sudden going to be, you know, forefront. And, uh, and it's definitely imperfect timing. You know, we, mm -hmm. we're definitely mm -hmm. at that cutting edge where, yeah, we could use a little bit of um, support right now from that emergence energy. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm and seeing, then, go, ahead. go ahead. Go ahead. Well, I, it just makes me think like there's different solutions being shared now that are so different, like in the old days, <laughs> when we were doing business is you got to work hard and there's a path and you got to pay your price. And there's always been that sort of mindset, at least in the Western culture. Right. And now I'm hearing more and more people who are able to say, share, teach how to shortcut it, how it doesn't have to be hard, how with these simple three things, we can go from here to here quickly. And it's not in the same language of what I would call like scam artists where promising you the world without having to do the work where it's actually based on shifting your energy facing your fears and making different choices while seeing possibilities and holding them you know mm -hmm. and it's moving faster like we're seeing possibilities and people teaching that there can be new possibilities and then showing us the way there so i'm seeing more of those out in the field whether they're on podcasts or people actually teaching this well, one thing I find, um, you know, just in having worked with you uh, is that um, you not only are very aware of, let's say, higher kind of universal energies that you're very sensitive to that and you know how to maybe um, sense it, feel it and put word to it so that people just don't feel kind of crazy when it's happening. You know, it's very grounding. Uh, second mm -hmm. is that you are you're a visionary for that person's higher self. You're really listening to their higher self in terms mm -hmm. of how to create the business or the experience that they're wanting to have. But the mm -hmm. other thing, it feels like you've also brought in that I think is, is, is pretty cool too, is that you do have a inner listening for maybe that person's guidance system, like maybe their tribes of light or maybe mm -hmm. their human design work. And yes. if um, people aren't aware of human design, they can go to humandesign.com. You can put in some birth information. It's sort of like getting an astrological chart, but it's based on a whole bunch of different systems all at once. And you can see a little bit how your, your energy flows. But Judith, you know, you've, you've helped me out a lot just by looking at my human design so that I'm not my own kind of worst enemy. Sometimes knowing a little bit more about um, your human design or the guides that are working or the higher self message um, yes. keeps us grounded. And it's acknowledging, like you said, in the very beginning, that maybe some of these things weren't acknowledged to us as a child. And oh, I yeah. find that you have this incredibly nurturing, loving energy that helps to even for an inner child part of us that's in this mm -hmm. world, that it's super soothing to be in your presence and to kind of learn about yourself while being on this business, maybe visionary journey with you. I have found there's been a lot of healing, even um, <clears throat> on kind of an inner child level and an acknowledgement of <clears throat> where you may be, you know, one of a very small handful, one of a few people who could actually acknowledge that energy. So I didn't feel crazy or I didn't feel made wrong or I, you know what I mean? And then I could actually learn. And if I relaxed enough, I learned how to use some of those gifts more for me instead of sabotaging them. Because I find a lot of people tend to sabotage themselves. So anything you want to say about that? Oh, well, thank you for sharing that. That's like, it's really helpful sometimes to hear it reflected from someone else. But yes, I do do that. Um, yeah, I think human design is a beautiful gift. Like I came across it. I'd been told by multiple people to take a look at human design. And I looked at it once and I was like, wait, this is way too complex. And about 2014, my soul guided me there. And I was like, all right, I'll pay attention. And then I, I tend to take the simplest pieces of it. And here's a, the reason I use it is so much of energy is 
loose, like it's just out there. And, he, and human design helps make it very practical to the human. I can, I can see really quickly in the chart how you're designed to create and how you're designed to make decisions and then how you move in the world. And if yeah. people can line up with those things, and it's from a soul perspective, the way I think of human design, it's, it's the way your soul, um, your soul came into the bot, into your body. And it gave you this clue about how to stay in alignment without having to get into a lot of the spiritual esoteric stuff. And if you can just follow this, you'll stay in alignment with your soul and universal creation. And so it's, a, it's, a, it's an easy, like it's an easily uh, map, like simple. And so that helps me to just feel for, oh, are you following how you're naturally designed to move? And then in terms of your physical world choices and dreams. Um, but yeah, I think, again, it goes back to what we talked about really early on. I don't see anybody in the middle of what they're going through as on doing something wrong or not on their path. They're always on their path and they're doing exactly what's correct for them. Even when it feels great, not great. And they feel like they're off course. They're always on course. So there's yeah. something there. Mm -hmm. Well, um, I know I'm going to give you an example because I find a lot of people, particularly high impasse, have this and you're going to be working with people, um, mm -hmm. women who are a little bit more designed towards being high impasse and highly yes. intuitive, right? And so in the energy, um, I know for me personally, and this came up through human design, but you were able to research my chart because it because you do, when you choose mm -hmm. to work with a client, you do look at their human design, you look it up, and then you're able to kind of reflect back to them as you go. You do mm -hmm. take the time to kind of meditate and be present with them and their higher vision. This is not just an intellectual process for you. It's a very soulful and intuitive process yeah. that's very individual and unique for that individual. But um, I know for me, just even in my personal life, I have a tendency to sometimes... Uh, um, in my human design, I have an open emotional center. And so the good news is it gives me this incredible gift of being able to tune into people's emotions and do what I do, which is awesome. The downside is that if somebody is projecting towards me, I will take it on as if it's about me when it's not. And that is where my mm -hmm. shortcoming is most of the time. Like I will just fall to my knees. I will sabotage myself. I will just, you know, think I've done something <laughs> horribly wrong for weeks on end, I'll try to make up for it. And it just wastes my time, my energy. And it really wasn't even about me. So that's something that you've really taught me a lot. And it has helped my business immensely. Just even knowing that one thing has helped me immensely to be able to stay a bit more focused and have a uh, better self-esteem, better self-love, better self-care, just knowing that one thing that then helps my finances. Yeah. It helps my business. It helps my sleeping at night. <laughs> it helps everything, right? <laughs> when you just uh, uh -huh. kind of have somebody reflect back that, no, you're not this thing, this person is projecting. Mm -hmm. You just, you know what I mean? But I think in business, because business is so much like dealing with a family, because our biological family or adoptive family, however we're raised, when you go out into the world and you're working at a business, whether it's your business you're running and you have employees or whether it's a business that you're cooperating with or any kind of vision, nonprofit, whatever, you're gonna have to deal with people. And the minute you deal with people, that's gonna engage your nervous system to then yes. have yes. to start processing those family issues. So that was one thing I noticed in working with you uniquely because I've worked with a lot of different business coaches and people. And, um, that is a big deal. Yeah. So, yeah. So we are going to take a quick break and we'll be right back. All right. You are on my wild magic with Adrian. I am Adrian Cobb. This is transformation talk radio. And if you are interested in joining my meditation group that I do every Wednesday, uh, you can go to mywildmagic.com, check out the hearts on fire weekly meditation. I do again, that's mywildmagic.com. So Judith, we were just on a break and uh, looking at the energy of creativity and how emergence mm -hmm. really is a creative, it's a universal creative frequency, right? And a lot of times we have creativity, then we have chaos. So can you talk a little bit about what that means to you and how you kind of work with people, how you help them? Okay, so this is a really cool thing. Um, really, emergence is creative energy, and creative energy by itself is this beautiful. We all know it. You get really excited. There's there's all the possibilities show up, 
And then when you're in business, you have all these possibilities show up and then you wonder, okay, then how do I do it? And then you get into overwhelm. Like, how do I get these ideas into form? And when creativity exists within chaos, chaos is, we use chaos as it's like just this turbulence, right? But in truth, chaos has order. And um, I've talked about this with my mentorship group. You, it, everybody knows the sand dunes on a beach, right? When the wind is blowing sand in, it looks like chaos. But when the sand particles land without somebody directing them with the wind, when they land on the beach, there's order. Those dunes will form shapes. We have ex ac access to that same entire structure organization, and it's very intuitive and it's very flowing and it doesn't have steps. It's nonlinear, but it's naturally like science has proven this, like it has a name and people talk about it and it, and it exists too within uh, the natural kingdom too. Um, they say that uh, termites use the same sort of formation in terms of how they build their structures. So they don't have a plan, but every little piece Every little piece of sand that lays down creates an order. And that's what we're doing right now without knowing how we're doing it. And that's what's going to be happening with the emergence energies. Oh, it's really interesting. We're going to be shifting our systems completely. Yeah, that is fascinating. And so, you know, um, I'd imagine right now that um, for people who really do feel like there is a higher purpose for them and a higher purpose for being here, a higher vision for the earth, this is really their, their time. You know, their yes. time to really come into alignment with that and having, you know, maybe the systems that aren't really there yet to support that. It sounds like you are, again, kind of on the forefront of mm -hmm. this new way of doing business. And so I think mm -hmm. if anybody was out there that was wanting a new way of doing business, so, I mean, the old way of business, how would you describe the old way? Uh, structured, there's steps, there's a right way to do it. Um, there's um, linear it's linear it's incredibly linear there's to take one step to go the next step um be efficient and logical which is just like the opposite of intuition that, that uh, make decisions from your not mind not your heart uh, make decisions based on money because you know the only way to make more money is to focus on how much money you have and that's also not true we actually have an exponential universe um yeah, I think those are so kind of the really um, kind of then what you're describing about the old way of doing business, which I have an I'm like the antithesis of that personally, yes, and just I could about not everybody hold else. that down if I had to actually, um, which is why I own my own business. Right. But mm -hmm. um, when you move forward, then in emergence, it's, it's the antithesis. It is sort of the opposite of that. So it sounds like what you're describing to me, it sounds like in terms of where we're going with emergence is more of like a quantum energy. Like it, anything is possible. It's quantum quant consciousness. It sounds exactly. like is really an aspect of your business then at its very foundation is the mm -hmm. understanding of our quantum consciousness individually. And then how mm -hmm. our quantum consciousness within us inspires the morphogenic field, the quantum consciousness of the world around us. Exactly. Universe upon universes actually. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's a, and that's kind of how it works. And it's really this beautiful, interesting merger. So when I work with somebody, they have desires and dreams and don't spend a lot of time thinking about quantum energy or emergence energy. But the way that I hold everything somehow works so that I'm helping them expand in that way. So it is nonlinear. Each choice you make connects to the next best choice, even though it's not a step-by-step -step process. And the thing that you wanted to do when we started talking, even though we don't deal with it for three months, suddenly comes up to play in month four and happens. It, it's just this beautiful, it moves like nature moves. It, it blooms as it's supposed to bloom without us forcing anything or taking steps or working hard. Yeah. Wow. When it sounds like uh, then really it just comes down to our beingness. Like it seems like in the natural scheme of things, the more we're in tune with our own innate beingness, not trying to do something to be something for the money, for another person, for the world, for acceptability. Exactly. And we're just in our own natural beingness. So it sounds like really as a mentor, then you really help people to relax into their beingness instead of being super stressed. I got this business idea and I got to bring it forward and I got to do it. And what kind of website do I need? And what kind of marketing do I need? It sounds like you're way more into the 
beingness of that energy, letting the universe kind of meet that person where they're at and uh-huh. support them forward. Exactly. That does happen. And yeah, and I can't, I'm still not able to let go of the physical world of not able yeah, those to. are all important those things along but they're not the leaders we tend to lead with what website do we do and let's lead with business the oh no you, yeah you do beautiful do the work. other stuff lightly yeah mm-hmm. like your marketing work i have found to be not only beautiful like exquisite and beautiful in the nature of what you create and very much in perfection into that that higher visionary capacity of what somebody would be uh, drawn towards but it vibrationally matches the person that you're working with too so mm-hmm. it is a beautiful blend of how you are able to do the the um, the, te- the technical aspects of what the team that you need in place and knowing the right people to be on your team and who's going to work in your human design field best and then how to be in yourself so that you can allow all these gifts to work so that you're mm-hmm. not struggling mm-hmm. against yourself Yes, exactly. I mean, most people I do think forget the beingness part in every single thing they do. It's kind of almost a little bit hard to teach, but it seems like the more acceptance or compassion you have with that person, beingness naturally feels safe to come out. And I know in working with you in your energy field, I have felt more like a sense of acceptance and allowing uh, in a way that has allowed that for myself. And then the more my beingness comes out, the more my business just goes in these really positive directions that maybe I wouldn't have even considered or thought possible. Yes. Yes. And the, and that it's interesting, right. To help people grow their businesses. And then that what it's true, but I don't spend a lot of time. We don't spend as much time working on business as we do working on whatever else is going on in your life. Like that's reflections of your life and the growth and weaving that in somehow because that's going to affect your business. So yeah, definitely. Very yeah. Very true. That's part of the beingness. Right. Yeah. So it's a beautiful mix of energies. You know what I mean? Um, like it's rare, I think, to come across somebody like you that has the capacity to listen on a higher spiritual level without the dogma of spirituality, you know, and then to be able to truly unconditionally listen to a person's higher self, not because you're trying to control them or gain something from them, but literally just hold a space for their higher self unconditionally. That's a rare gift. And then Mm -hmm. to be able to blend it with helping that vision come into form is a whole nother gift. Yes. You know, that (laughs) comes about. So it's 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 a rare, yeah, a rare, um, honest part. The bringing it into form for me is the funnest part. Well, and so I think that in order to do what you do, you would really have to be kind of in your own emergence. And so how would people, we're coming to the end of the show here. So if somebody was to want to work with you and kind of bring their own energy, their own beingness into creative expression, uh, what kind of program do you offer? What's the details of that? Um, Right now I do emergence mentoring. It's a six month program. So, uh, and it is my sort of my style is to be open, just like we've been talking about. I do like to have regular every other week meetings and I am very supportive through audio contact or text if people prefer that, but it is a full bespoke is the common word, but it's very personalized to each person based on where they come in and what they want to do and what they need to have happen. Whether it's going to be a lot more being work, or if it's going to be a lot more working work, or if it's going to be working with the team. But I just have the capacity to meet people when they're ready to be held and grow. And in this case, where they know they're growing, and there isn't something that exists right now to help them. There isn't a system that feels good anywhere else and they want to do it on their terms, then I support them through that. And that's a wobbly place to walk through, right? So yeah, that's beautiful. And to have a guide, to have somebody who is as talented or skilled as you to kind of help, you know, bring that emergence into the world of somebody's higher. I mean, because our visions are precious to us. I mean, our whole soul goes into the vision yes. that we want to contribute. It's very personal. It's very divine. It's very sacred. Um, it connects to our tribes of light. It, it, you know, it, it connects to so many very um, intimate and vulnerable aspects of us. And so to have somebody as honoring as you are is quite beautiful. So Judith, thank, thank you so you. much for being on the show today. And thank, uh, thank you, you so that. much for the years of service that you have done, you know, your work with me as well. I wouldn't be where I am uh, without your assistance. So thank you so thank much. You, Adrian. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm really, I'm really grateful. This has been really good to do. I love talking about this. <laughs> 
I love it. You're emerging. You're emerging. I am. I am. I love the emergence energies. Every time I talk about it, there's more. Exactly <laughs> right. Okay. So onward and upward to an emergent world. Thank you so much for listening today and we'll see you next week. Thanks for tuning in to My Wild Magic with me, your host, Adrian Cobb. Each one of us has a sole purpose on this earth and a higher purpose full of creative expression and unique soul attributes. Make sure to tune in next week on TransformationTalkRadio.com to continue your journey home to your truest self and pursue the path of unconditional self-love. If you would like to learn more about me, visit MyWildMagic.com. Again, that's MyWildMagic.com. Dot com.